Okay, so we are doing second order differential equations here. And it's second order because the highest derivative in here is the second derivative, and we have a first derivative, which doesn't have to be in there to be a second order, but this is the highest derivative. So we want to write this as a coupled first order set of equations. So in order to do that, our key is we do a substitution. We let dx dt, and we set that equal to y. And so when I plug y into this equation, when this is y, then I also know that this then is the derivative of y. Because I know if I just, if I do the derivative here, well that's the derivative of x, the second derivative, that has to equal to the first derivative. So if I use that idea, then I can replace this with dy dt equal, or sorry, plus, plus 4y plus 9x equals e to the negative t. And so if I rearrange this scenario, I know that I have my equations are going to be dx dt is y and dy dt is going to be, bring this over, I'm going to get e to the negative t minus 4y minus 9x. And so here are coupled first order equations. Now use Euler's method with a step of 0.1 to estimate this. Well, we know all this information. And so I'm going to make myself a table. So I'm going to n, I have x, I have dx dt, which is y, and I have t. And when n is 0 or when t is 0, I know that x is 0 and the derivative is 1. So this is 0, this is 1. And I also know that this here is my y value. So I use, from the formula booklet, I use this scenario here. And I know my x value is going to be, so I always go one less, so xn is equal to xn minus 1 plus h, which is my step, which I am told is 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 times the derivative of this, which is going to be yn minus 1. And then my next one, yn, is going to be yn minus 1 plus 0 0.1 times this value here. So it's e to the negative tn minus 1 minus 4yn minus 1 minus 9x sub n minus 1. And finally, we'll also do our t value, where t sub n is equal to tn minus 1 plus the step here. Okay, These equations must be written. And so once I've done that, I could simplify them. And this one here, the y value simplifies quite nicely, or simplifies a little bit, I know. I could take the y, y sub n, when I distribute this here, when I take y n minus 1 and I distribute this here, I end up looking at my notes, I get 0 0.6 y n minus 1 plus 0 0.1 e to the negative t n minus 1, and then minus 0 0.9 x n minus 1. And so let me, and so what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this into my calculator and I am going to put in these three versions of my calculator into the equations with these particular values as my starting values. So I go y equals, I'm in sequence mode, mode is sequence, and y equals, I'm starting at zero, which is my n value zero. And so I'm going to be plugging all these values in. My x value is 0, my y value is 1, 
my t value, as you can see, is also going to be zero. And I've already typed them in, as you can see. Um, it is tricky typing these values in and because you can't see a lot of it. And now we go to our table. And just to be clear, we are looking for when x at 1. That means I'm going to be doing n is 10, I believe. So we can check over here when n is 10. So that means I'm going to do when n is 10. My x value is 0 0.107. My y value is negative 0 0.246. And this is 1. And so to answer the question, based upon Euler's formula, x at 1 is equal to 0 0.107. It's approximately that. Now, then it says, on this interval for 0 between t, t, t is between 0 and 1, estimate the maximum displacement. Well, x is displacement. And so the maximum displacement, x, sub n, okay? Because we know this is undoing these derivatives to find out an approximation for what they are. And so we're looking for the minimum displacement, which means we're looking for when is the x value as small as possible on the interval for t being from 0 to 1. Okay, and so on these 10 values, where is it smallest? So if we watch this column here, let's start back at 0 again. So I'm going to start at 0. Now I'm going to go here. I get, I'm looking at all these values here as I go down. And 0.23 seems to be the largest value for x. And so when I'm going to do C part, the last part, the maximum displacement, max displacement for x equals 0 0.230, 230, and t is equal to, toggle it over, oh, I think it said 0 0.4, t is equal to 0 0.4 and n is equal to 4. The y value just happens to be negative 0 0.0081. Okay, and so we can use our differential equations and others method to solve various things and even use applications recognizing that displacement is x, this was velocity, and that was the acceleration. And using our information from those ideas to solve problems as well. Oh, one more thing. Calculators are really hard. You have to get good with it, but you could use spreadsheets to do it. Here's one I've done for one of your exercises, and I put my initial values in, and then I make the formula is what is shown in the, as opposed to using here, I use my cells in the spreadsheet, and it is much faster, but please make sure you know how to use your calculator but the spreadsheet is much easier and more efficient overall.